Hi, this is PA Camping Dad, Doogie. Uh, gonna give you a DIY video on how to make this. Uh, don't have it compressed really tight. Um, let's see size, it's a little bit bigger than an Algene, but it probably could be compressed to roughly the size of it if you wanted to really over compress it. Um, and it is a summer weight top quilt. Uh, down and uh, I did a step by step. I made it with uh, Dutch's Argon fabric. Uh, it was the Argon 990, whatever, not the really light stuff because I like the colors of this one better uh, than what he had in the 6.7. But it weighs in at 12.3 ounces in the stuff sack, uh, and I would—it's got about an inch of loft. I would probably say uh, I wouldn't take it any lower than 50 degrees. I would think, uh, but I had it out uh, on one warm weather outing where I slept on top of it for the first half of the night, and then when it chilled down, I uh, got underneath it uh, and made it. Uh, I call it a titanium gray on the inside and a royal blue on the outside. And let me get into it and show you how to do it. So I first started out by laying out my quilt on the fabric. Then I cut out along the lines, uh, being careful to measure twice and cut once. Then I did a rolled hem around the whole perimeter of my quilt. It just makes things easier for me. So this is the corner detail that I do to have the corners be a full corner. I can show you. I did one already and I figured I'd show the the rest. So what I did was I draw this is this is the corner of my quilt itself and this will be the loft going up the side and this will be the loft going up the end and in order to to have the corner uh, be crisp and supported and not just you know, mushed, mushed around, I create, I sew those together. So I drew this line. In my, in my case, I gave myself two inches for seam allowance, and I've already hemmed, done a rolled hem, so I've lost some of that seam allowance already. But I drew this before I even cut it out. So this is two inch seam allowance, plus an inch for my loft, and this was three inches from the end the one side so this goes from three inches to two inches and three inches to two inches from the raw material then what I do is I take these those lines and I fold right on the point where they come together and I match them up and I will show how I do that after I match them up I sew them together cut off the end and do a little rolled hem and when you then this is this is the outs what will be the outside of my quilt you get a nice corner there so that's that's the detail that I'm doing right now so what I found is if you depending upon the fabric you're using some you can see through very easily this is about medium easy to see through uh, what I found is if I just uh, have some backlight. Hopefully you'll be able to see this on the camera. Anyway, you get get your two lines lined up and then you pin it. I always try to pin it to the outside, the part that will be cut away before, after I sew it and that way I don't have any holes that will induce any down leakage. So once you have it lined up and pinned, 
take it over to the sewing machine and just sew that short, in this case, one inch line. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, I think it's more needed if you have a, a winter quilt, something that uh, has more loft. It's a little touch that I like to do. And then what you can do is at the top of the stitching, you can just cut over here up close to your stitching line. You can go ahead and, and open this corner up. You're going to need to later. And then you can roll this roll this down so that don't have any any spot for down leakage to come to get at the back side of that seam because this is where the down will be inside of here but and that's that's it do that for each corner so here's a shot at how I'm doing the baffles uh, I purchased uh, the baffle material pre-cut from Dutch uh, because I'm doing one inch total height. I got his one and a half inch baffles. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the strip of, of baffle material here and I'm sticking it to a piece of tape, the blue painter's tape, and I'm sticking it on at about a quarter of an inch and I once that's all adhered to the, the baffle then I take it and I drew some light lines on my uh, shell and here's one I already stitched down I I lay the, the piece of tape here and line up the the edge of the tape with my line where I'm gonna have my stitching and then I stitch right down oops, then I stitch right down the edge of the tape and the tape was here and then I peel the tape off after the after I stitch it and just repeat the process for every baffle you have this is the line I'm gonna stick my tape to now and just work your way down here I am set up to uh, do the next stitch this next baffle in. You see I have the first baffle all neatly coiled up out of out of the way. Uh, first baffle neatly rolled up because you don't want to accidentally catch some of your stitching. out of this piece of tape. Uh, first of all it's a little getting a little short because I'm going I started at the foot end and I'm going towards the head end. So you get a couple uses out of each each piece of tape. Okay, so I started uh, assembling the quilt. So you see I have my, call the blue part, my bottom half. And I have all my baffles sewn on like I showed you I was doing before. And I have two, two baffles attached to the top sheet now. And I'll show you how that goes. So I have lines on here where the baffle comes to have all of the bottom on one side, the top is 
neatly rolled up uh, on the other side. And I grab my baffle, my next baffle in line, and it's important that you start that way so that the entire, all the fabric is away as we're going to be stitching down here. So I get it, drag it up into, into position. I get it close. I line it up on my stitch line so I got about a quarter inch of overlap and initially I tried to do it with uh, one big long piece of tape and that wasn't uh, working out too well. I found it was a lot easier to work in smaller segments so I'll line my tape up and stick it down really good and just work my way along make sure that I got enough of an over overlap tape it. Make sure I got a good a full quarter inch. on the ends where to stop my stitching. See this piece of tape already has a mark on it so I'll just line the mark up my stop stitching point. much all there is to it. I'll mark the other end here where I'm going to start my stitching. And now I'll just run the stitches right down the edge of that tape line making sure that nothing moves nothing from this side comes in and this side stays contained. In fact I do like to put a couple binder clips on this stack just to keep them keep it all contained because the last thing you want to do is have a stitch going through your middle of your quilt and have to pull it all out. So one thing I found was when I took this and put it in my lap and tried to feed it through I was finding the tape was was coming off. So the last baffle I did I turned my machine sideways and I can guide it enough um, and just fed it through right on the table and that, that seemed to work really well. Unfortunately, uh, I need to move the camera because the camera is where the fabric needs to go. So, let's see if I can.
So, as you can see, finished now. And I have two baffles done there. And, well, I guess kind of, there's also the end baffle, which the edges haven't been sewn up yet on. But, just keep doing that and repeating. Uh, I'm not going to videotape it. It would take me too long to do the whole thing, and you wouldn't want to see it all. Well, here I am filling the quilt. Um, I found this method is uh, works all right. I use different things. This happens to be a placemat that I curled up and uh, holds the holds the channel open at the top. Uh, the addition of another line above to keep it from flopping around really helps a lot. I, first time I did that I tried to hold it the whole time. Uh, and I just kind of ram the down into it. It'll clog, kind of clog up here and then I shake it down and work it down. Uh, I won't do too much talking while I'm stuffing the down because I'm going to keep movements and uh, of air down to a minimum. So here's my finished top quilt. Uh, I went a little quick at the end because I wanted to take it on a camp out this last weekend with the scouts. Um, it was very nice in hot conditions. Uh, got a little chilly towards morning and I ended up sleeping on top of it for the first part of the night. And then got inside towards morning. So the way I finished it was I just made a couple um, loops, ties, out of some of the parts that I trimmed off of the argon so they're nice and soft. Uh, that's I think five layers. You know, I rolled it couple times so that there would be no exposed seams and I just spaced the two two tie outs. My feet get hot a lot so I like the ability to have it as just a blanket and my finishing of the end I have a cord and a channel and I tie a bowline knot in one end and just use a mini cord lock in the other as long as I tie that bowl in nice and small, I can cinch it down and the cord lock, I can fit it through if I put it on end, I can get it through that, but it won't pull through on its own. So I can take it out and open it all the way up and stretch it out flat. And that's it. It's got uh, a nice loft, uh, about an inch, 
which is what I wanted. Uh, very pleased with it. I love the Argon. It's got such a great feel to it. Well, that's my latest project. It's a little, little complex, but uh, since I, I had already done a top quilt before, um, it was fairly straightforward. Get out there and have fun.